Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're out in the western suburbs of Chicago, and I'm here with Dave Hans. Dave, good to see you. Good to see you. And Dave, I met on Saturday, and he had a great car there, and this is one of the other great cars in his collection. We'll show them both. But uh, Dave, what is the car that we have here today? This is my $60 bargain that I bought in <laughs> 1969 for $60. I bought it as a parts car for another month that I had. And uh, it turned out to be the second months ever made. Number two. And the first 28 were what? The first 28 were made in Glendale, California, in the shops of Frank Curtis, a, a name that's well known in the Indianapolis uh, uh, racing circuit. And uh, the remainder of the cars were made in Evanston, uh, and they were made out of uh, essentially steel, steel fenders as opposed to aluminum fenders with the others. Which the first 28 were aluminum. So let me show you what his first car that he purchased for $60 looked like. And with that being said, this was the uh, purchased car here, right there. <laughs> There's number, VIN number 102, that was $60. And I want to just take a moment to show you kind of the details of this car here. And I'll let that scroll down slowly so you can pause your computer. But with that being said, let's go to our featured attraction, which is this. Come on right alongside me, Dave. So your car, that's something you don't see in your rearview mirror at all. How many months are left? They're estimating that there were 50 or 60 months left. And how many uh, are there are there originally? Because I know there was some controversy on that. The the original the number of cars that were made of total production of months automobiles was 198. And this is uh, in conflict with a previously published number of 394, which is a figment of someone's imagination way back when. And first of all, I mean, this car is stellar example of uh, what a month's jet should look like. I want to let, let people just take it in. And we have the privilege today of having just a great day and the sun beaming on that car. This, for all intents and purposes, is a brand new Munz Jet. I want to just show that logo. We have it in the upright position. So you can see that. Just tremendous. Now we've got this sharp rake on the windshield. What's the color of this car? It's actually called Merlot. Okay. It looks like a wine. It is. Uh, it's what we think that it, that the one of the original colors offered, which was called Tahitian red, would have been. And this whole roof comes off. It's, it's one big piece. It's a removable hardtop. Removable hardtop. And let's take a look. The the thing with the months in this time frame, which was amazing, was this is a very fast car for its time. You could see how wide it is and how low it is. And this car was known that, what was it, 120 miles an hour was top speed? Or? Actually, there was one that was outfitted with a, a, a race-equipped Mercury engine, which was clocked at 140 miles an hour wow. on the Bonneville Salt Flats. And that's hauling. That's hauling, for sure. This is just so wonderful. Look at the bumpers. I mean, it has... Uh, with the skirts, I mean, everything on this car. How long does it take you to go from $60, what we saw, to, to, to taking the time to get this? I'll let you open it. How does, I'm not sure how that opens. I just give it a yank. Okay. <laughs> Lou, pull it. How long did it take to put this to the concourse level that it's at right now? It's difficult to discuss. Okay. It was a long time. All right. And there's that emblem that we've seen, and the turned dash well before the Pontiac Trans Am. It's just amazing. You had the padded dash and the clock 
properly outfitted in the center. But look even down here. The Arvin heater. The proper gauges. And this is the uh, the park reverse neutral drive and the stock for that. Where is the uh, turn indicator? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Got it. Could I point out is something? It? Yes, please? please. These buttons here yes. indicating which gear you're in are actually buttons, mother of pearl buttons from a blouse wow. that were used. And so when we took this apart, we found out that there were little thread holes on the back of that. So they, Is that they right? improvised when they made those. Is that right? And look at this hood liner. Let me show that. A rough liner that matches the rest of the body. And you have these big glove compartments in the back seat there. Those were actually for liquor. Is that right? That's correct, right. So they're insulated and they were for carrying, bringing your booze along with you. <laughs> Very insulated. Not, not that is great. Let's pop the hood, shall we? I was going to suggest that. This is a Cadillac engine. This is a Cadillac engine, which was the way the first 28 were made. And they normally had two carburetors, but in the true spirit of what the month is, we've done a little modification. Oh yes. Oh, that's wonderful. And the, and the light's hitting it properly. We've got the dual horns in there. Tell me about these Hildebrand equipment that I'm seeing here. My it was a uh, speed equipment manufacturer back in the 50s, Hildebrand. So this is Hildebrand, thank you. So this is all properly the way it was done. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now where did you, th this is a custom manifold? This is this was a typical speed equipment offering from back in the 50s. Oh my gosh. And that's with six Stromberg 97 carburetors. So it's it's true hot rod equipment. Let's let's turn it on, let's, let's hear it purr. It's hard not to smile after hearing that, right? I mean, <laughs> that is a wonderful sound. Yeah, I think it's a great sound. Yeah, yeah, you can see why these cars could get up to that speed, my goodness, with no restriction and just letting it fly. Dave, outstanding car. Thanks for inviting me over. Thanks for being on my car store. You're welcome. I got one other question before I leave. Sure. Um, what's the reaction when you're driving this car? Depends on which community you drive through. Yeah, okay. Tell Sometimes me in the more affluent community, the only thing that turns ahead is a new Mercedes SUV. <laughs> so obviously we have different tastes. Yes. Excellent. And when you're in the right community who understands what this is, what do they act like? Uh, people drop jaws, you know. and They act like me. <laughs> they run yeah, right yeah, over. Right. Dave, a pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing a few other cars in your collection. Thanks for being on my car story. You're welcome.